The Pyrethroid Working Group is an alliance of companies that manufacture pyrethroid insecticides. The PWG would like to thank the pest control operators of California for providing valuable input and expertise in the production of these videos. In an effort to provide the highest level of stewardship, the PWG is dedicated to making available the most accurate, relevant, and current information about pyrethroids. These videos and an industry website have been created especially for pest management professionals as a way to keep them informed of the latest research and regulatory issues involving pyrethroid insecticides. Hi, I'm Jim Steed. I've been asked by the Pyrethroid Working Group to help demonstrate some methods of making applications to the exteriors of homes and businesses that are in compliance with the new pyrethroid regulations from the Department of Pesticide Regulation. There are 17 active ingredients that are affected by these regulations. A clear understanding of these regulations will help you to provide effective service for your customers as well as stay in compliance with the regulations. And it'll limit pesticide runoff into California's waterways. The most important thing for you to understand is that you still are required to follow the product label. You need to have proper protective equipment and follow the instructions on the label. You now are also required when using these active ingredients to follow these additional regulations. Hi, I'm Jim Steed. One of the most important aspects of complying with these new regulations is to have a clear understanding of key terms. In this segment, we'll take a look at some of the most important definitions provided to us by the Department of Pesticide Regulation. Aquatic habitat means bodies of water such as lakes, reservoirs, rivers, perennial intermittent streams, wetlands or ponds, sloughs, and estuaries. Crack and crevice treatment means the application of small amounts of insecticide directly into cracks and crevices in which insects hide or through which they may enter the building. Example are openings occurring at expansion joints, between different elements of construction, and between equipment and floors. Only minimal amounts of pesticide should remain on the surface. Impervious surfaces means hard surfaces such as concrete or asphalt streets, sidewalks, and driveways. Precipitation means the condensation of atmospheric water vapor that falls under gravity. Precipitation does not include mist or fog. Spot treatment means an application limited to areas that will not exceed two square feet on which pests are likely to occur or have been located during the process of monitoring or inspection. Pinstream applications with a one inch or less footprint are permitted to horizontal or vertical impervious surfaces. Pinstream applications can be made to surfaces where there is no crack or crevice present. This provides an option for treatment to vertical and horizontal surfaces where insects may be present. Hi, I'm Jim Steed. In this segment, we're going to take a look at some acceptable application methods made to various horizontal surfaces away from the base of the structure. As discussed in our segment on definitions, there are two types of horizontal surfaces that can be treated away from the structure. The first type of surface is impervious. Impervious surfaces can be treated with a crack and crevice treatment, pin stream, or a spot spray. Pervious surfaces, including grass, mulch, and other landscaped areas, can be treated with a traditional broadcast spray. Pervious surfaces may be treated according to label, to within two feet of adjoining non-permeable surfaces. Applications of pyrethroid granules are permitted to pervious surfaces. Any granules that fall on adjacent impervious surfaces must be swept back into the target area. In areas where pervious and impervious surfaces meet, pin stream, crack and crevice, and spot treatments can be made. Hi, I'm Jim Steed. In this segment, we're going to take a look at a demonstration of some acceptable applications under the new California regulations to the vertical surfaces of a structure. For applications to vertical surfaces of a structure, you can use a number of methods. 
they include spot treatment, crack and crevice treatment, pinstream treatment of one inch wide or less, perimeter band treatment up to a maximum height of two feet above the grade level. All adjacent horizontal surfaces must be treated according to the regulations. For perimeter band treatments where impervious surfaces are adjacent to the structure, vertical surfaces can still be treated to a height of two feet. For the adjacent impervious surfaces may be treated with pin stream, spot sprays, or crack and crevice treatments. Treatment to the surfaces of a garage door and the adjacent pavement should be avoided. These areas should be treated with a pin stream, crack and crevice, or spot spray application. Hi, I'm Jim Steed. In this segment, we're going to take a look at application methods that are now prohibited by the new California regulations. The following applications are prohibited. Number one, to any site during precipitation. Number two, to the soil surface, mulch, gravel, lawn, turf, ground cover, or horizontal impervious surfaces with standing water, including puddles. Number three, to a sewer or storm drain or curbside gutter. Number four, to the following components of a constructed drainage system that drains to a sewer or storm drain, curbside gutter, or aquatic habitat, including visible drainage grate connected to a drain pipe, or a visible French drain or a landscape dry riverbed, swale, or a trench filled with gravel or rock. Number five, to the soil surface, including pre-construction termiticide sites, mulch, gravel, lawn, turf, ground cover, or horizontal impervious surfaces within 25 feet of the aquatic habitat located down gradient from the application. Number six, to the pre-construction termiticide site within 10 feet of a storm drain located down gradient from the application. Also prohibited are applications to plants, shrubs, or trees where there is standing water in the drip line or perimeter of the plants, shrubs, or trees. Hi, I'm Jim Steed. In this segment, we're going to take a look at some existing application methods that are not affected by the new California regulations. The following applications are exempt from the provisions of section 6970. A, injection into soil or structural materials such as bricks, concrete, or wood. B, post-construction rod or trench termiticide application methods. C, applications to below ground insect nests or nests made of mud or paper combs. D, application of baits in weatherproof bait stations or gel baits. E, pesticide applications to receiving waters for which a permit has been issued under the statewide General National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System for pesticide discharges to waters in the U.S. from spray applications and vector control applications. F. Applications to the undersides of eaves. G. Foggers or aerosol applications. Hi, I'm Jim Steed. In this segment, we'd like to take a look at how making a few modifications to your existing equipment can help you better comply with the new California regulations. One of the primary concerns we had with the new regulations is our ability to continue to use the power spray equipment that we've used over the years to make our standard applications. But we found with a couple of adjustments, we can continue to use this equipment and comply fully. One of the adjustments that we made is that we've reduced the pressure that we use the equipment at. Before we used to spray at around 100 to 150 PSI, we've reduced that now to about 50 to 60 PSI. The next adjustment we made is in the size of the nozzle that goes in the gun. By reducing this in size, we were able to make sure that the pattern fit within the regulations in all aspects around the property in the building. 
A few modifications to your equipment can go a long ways in helping you comply with DPR's new standards for applying pyrethroids around homes and structures and help limit the runoff of pesticides into California waterways. For more demonstrations and information about the new regulations, please visit this Pyrethroid Working Group website.